Grace and peace, friends and family. Welcome and thank you so much for joining me. My name is Joy and I am the founder of Pink Girl Teaches. I'm a certified life coach and I help victims overcome the fog they experience when being in a relationship with a narcissist. And I do this from a biblical perspective because I am a Christ follower and it is Jesus Christ who awoken me to the truth of what I was experiencing. And you know, we overcome by the blood of the lamb and the word of our testimony. And so this is why I am here. I want to take a moment to invite the ladies to join me to the When Queens Convene Bible Study, which is going to be tonight at 7 p.m. Central Standard Time. We meet on Zoom. It is not recorded. And we discuss a, a woman from the Bible. Every month it's a new woman. This month we are going to be looking at Tabitha, also known as Dorcas, and her story is in Acts chapter 9. I invite you to join me. And um, you can also just visit the website. You can register at the website and you can also just visit the website. It's pinkgirlteaches.com. Take a look around and see the services that are offered. I do have some prayer journals as well as scripture journals that I created and I use them myself. And if I can say so myself, they have been helping me in my growth, in my journey, should I say, of spiritual growth and development. But let's get to this topic today. The demonic traits of the female narcissist and what to look out for. Don't forget to hit the like button as you are watching this video so that we can share it out there. You know, when it comes to the talk of NPD and narcissists, yeah, the conversation is happening, but what happens a lot of the time is that it centers around men. And that is because st statistically, there are more male narcissists than they are female ones. However, as survivors and thrivers of this insidious and demonic abuse, we know that narcissists, they're not lining up to be diagnosed and so, or to be diagnosed so that they can heal, right? And if we go to Matthew 12, 26, what it tells us is that, and if Satan casts out Satan, he is divided against himself. How shall he, then his kingdom stand? So yeah, that kingdom is not divided. That's why they will not, they will not show up. It's a very, it's a very small percentage. It's a very small number of people who get tested. And usually there is a reason behind them getting tested. But we must remember that Satan masquerades as an angel of light. And likewise, his ministers do the exact same thing. So people will really expect male narcissists to be, you know, the dominant thing. But I, I, I do believe that, you know, that's one of the tactics of the enemy to cause distraction to keep you to keep people distracted always looking for male narcissists and blindsight them with female ones and women are able to hide behind their femininity and you know their softness and so people really have a hard time correlating that this woman this petite little you know charming sweet grandmother or whomever could be so evil and wicked she bat her eyelashes and give you a beautiful smile and people will be like, not her. Yes, her. They are equally dangerous and diabolical, equally evil as their male counterparts. And I do believe that some female narcissists are significantly more devious and demonic and manipulative than the male ones. Because remember, narcissism at the core is a spirit. And according to the word of God, Ephesians, in Ephesians, right, it lets us know that what? We wrestle not against flesh and blood. Therefore, it's a spirit. And that spirit rests either on a male or a female. And each spirit is influenced by different things. That's why narcissism in itself exists on a spectrum, right? And it's just the amount of, or the, you know, the, the, the demons, the spirits that are influencing that person, as well as how high ranking they are. Okay. So before we discuss the female narcissist, I just want to point out a couple of differences between the male and female narcissist. And this was according to a study. Um, this was this study was done by the University of Buffalo. And I will add a link to that study in the 
in the in the video description so you can take a look at it i found it pretty interesting but the study was based on 475,000 per participants and they compared the female the male and female narcissists using three criteria they looked at traits related to leadership authority grandiosity as well as entitlement and what they found out is that there is a distinct gender difference between the males who present more um as more power hungry and more entitled than female narcissists and so i think these are the differences that are internalized as children you know the stereotypes should i say as well as the societal pressures of in general roles that mold the female narcissist to be different than the than the male narcissist but let's look at the traits of the female narcissist the demonic traits of the female narcissist so we know what to look out for because that's what this video is about when it comes to these type they're more likely going to be covert and stealth narcissists this means that they are less obvious than the male counterparts or some of the male counterparts because shoot a covert male who will have a conversation about that but they're less obvious right and they're more likely to use manipulation and seduction to get what they want now i believe that this is where the jezebel reference comes in a lot because with jezebel right if you read in first kings right and started about chapter 16 and keep reading what we'll see is she knew that um, K, um, Jehu was coming after her. He was coming to kill her. He knew that she knew this, should I say. And instead of her, instead of her taking this as a, an opportunity to repent, instead of her even trying to flee, trying to run away and avoid this impending doom, what did Jezebel do? She started putting on her makeup. She started beautifying herself. Why? Why would she do that? Because I believe wholeheartedly that she was trying to seduce General Jehu and escape death that way. And if she was able to do this, like any narcissist, I believe, in fact, sociopath, psychopath, I believe she would have flipped the table, flipped the script and killed him if he if she had been successful. But that's what she did. She got dolled up in the face of danger, thinking that that was going to protect her or that was going to save her. Female narcissists are going to use, they're going to use, you know, I guess female tools, you know, the seductiveness and all of that to manipulate people. When it comes to them, they want to be considered the final voice of authority in the lives of their targets. This is why I call these entanglements pagan worship, which is idolatry she needs her and and before we even go further the whole story of jezebel is centered on idolatry the whole the whole story of it is all about idol worship and so she need um female narcissists let's go back to that female narcissists need their targets to constantly validate them and give them the attention and this is all pagan worship it is all idolatry and the thing about it is it's not optional it is a must when it comes to god we are given free will we have, we have free will to seek him we have free will to worship we have free will to pray but not in a pagan relationship you got you must follow the uh, the command from the head you know i was about to say um the head um a god but they're not a god narcissists although they view themselves as your master your lord and your god they're not they are human just like us that are under a demonic influence that have partnered with the kingdom of darkness to steal kill and to destroy in the lives of you know uh, of the people that they encounter so they must absolutely be the center of attention and they go to great work uh, they go to great lengths to make sure this happens and what happens is when you do not do that when you fail at the job of worshiping them <laughs> 
here comes that narcissistic rage. Why? Because you actually caused a narcissistic injury. And for some people, you wonder, well, what did I do? You know, I said everything right. Yeah, but maybe you didn't smile enough. You should have been showing your December teeth. You shouldn't have just come in there straight face and said, oh, you look nice. No, you should have made it all about how 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 a wonderful she looks. So a lot of people don't know what it is that causes that injury. But sometimes consider body language the tone the inflection of your voice and you're also being compared to the other subjects in the narcissistic harem who may have actually bowed down and worship maybe not physically but metaphorically and so you're being compared to that level of idol worship okay she's an attention seeker and will do anything and you got to remember that a kingdom divided against itself cannot stand. And so in their minds, yes, they see themselves as rulers of kingdoms. But let's before we even get far on this, on these type of kingdoms, they are all in Swampville. So you have no business there because in Swampville, you are you are worshiping marine spirits. OK, you have no business in Swampville. You ought to come out and, and you know, redirect your focus back to God that's through repentance through renouncing sin idolatry and actually being committed to walking the walk you know not just being a, a, a hearer of the word but rather a doer of the word that should be our goal and our focus these women or yeah the female narcissists they love social media they want to post for attention they want to post you know for compliments and sometimes they will post the accomplishments of their children of their siblings even of their parents if they are you know younger the accomplishments of anybody their partners anybody and claim some type of ownership over said accomplishes why accomplishments should I say because they want to be worshipped if it wasn't for me you know it's because of the type of mother that I am that my children are you know a b c d it's all about idolatry you they must be worshipped they are masters at manipulation they you know they are very charming right and incredibly charismatic but these masters of manipulation will use flattery and false compliments to secure supply let's go back to the 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 jezebel and jehu analogy right she was attempting to use her looks and her sexuality as a weapon this is what they do in their mind they see a man right this is an example they see a man and he he has everything that she needs he's financially secure stable and she's already beginning in her mind to see how said man can be beneficial to her or maybe you're her female friend and she's looking at you and your influence your audience or just whatever right your connections whatever she views as as a as a desired end she is going to position herself and use her looks and again now for men looks and sexuality as a weapon she wants to bamboozle you with her with her appearance hair makeup clothes they must be on fleek 24 7 she has to you know play the part so that she can get the admiration the adoration the adulation and the attention that she seeks but the level that she wants it at crosses over to where it becomes idolatry and she becomes the god or in her mind she is the god of swampville but you know when you you know that broken window effect like when you've been seeing when you break a window and it's a day and you're like you know what i'll fix it tomorrow and tomorrow just never comes and five years down the road you're still not bothered because it's been that way for so long that's how they are so comfortable in Swampville because they don't even recognize the condition that they are in you on the other hand child of God have no business in Swampville neither do you have any business associating with those that are there mm -mm. they tend to be controlling and you remember let's go back to the fact that they are pagan gods everybody must be a loyal subject and this loyalty 
is forceful. They will they they will do whatever they have to do to get you to be loyal. Think about the manipulation, the lies, the future faking, the false flattery, all to lead you to a place of deception and to keep you under their subjection. You see, when the enemy, the enemy, his agenda is always to steal, kill, and to destroy. But why? So he can gain dominion. It's ownership that they want. Ownership of you. No, it's crazy. They have a deep desire, and that we're going back to the control. The, this desire that they have to know what is going on at all times and in all places is extreme. That's why they are gossipers, murmurers, backbiters. It's all to fill or all to feed, right? The, the, the influence, the demonic influence that is on the inside of them. Experts at gaslighting, which let's not get it twisted, is psychological manipulation. They want their targets to doubt their own sanity. Mm -mm, chaos and confusion. And so another thing I want you to remember is that they're incredibly petty and sarcastic. And if you just think of the condition of society and culture right now, it is one that is highly sarcastic and very petty. And those type of things are glorified. And so, you know, why, why people will wonder, well, why can't they see that so-and-so is, you know, a narcissist or whatever, or that this is actually toxic behavior or abusive because it's entertaining to them. And it gives her the attention also that she wants. So it can be, you know, a, a way for her to get additional supply or, you know, just to amp up that supply. And so that's why she is that way. But they love to play the victim. Woe is me, the damsel in distress. She blames others for her own problems all the time. And if she is a mom, she uses her children as pawns to gain sympathy. It's crazy when you really think about it, though. It's really crazy. It's insane. They are very ruthless. You know, they, the female narcissist may not be, you know, physically aggressive or just as aggressive as men. And when I say she may not be, please, please understand that they, this is on a spectrum. There are some that are physically uh, aggressive. We've seen this. There is evidence of it out there. There are people within our own community that have shared stories where the female narcissist was aggressive, but I'm using this, you know, just in comparison to men, because we are highlighting her traits. She may not be as physically aggressive, but please understand that does not make her less abusive. Abuse is abuse. The scars may not be always visible, but they are there. And we all know that those emotional scars run deep. This is why children of female narcissists are, you know, they struggle with that mother wound. And that mother wound runs deep because, you know, we're all groomed to believe that mothers should be a certain way, kind, loving, affectionate. She, you know, she's one of the first people that her children, her sons, her daughters are supposed to experience safety and love. She is to validate her children. She is to make them feel seen and heard, but never a female narcissist. That mother wound runs deep. It runs deep and they, you know, because they have no emotional empathy, they couldn't care less about anyone's feelings. That's why even a baby can get it. Even a baby can get it. And the thing that makes all of this so diabolical is that they actually enjoy other people's pain pain it gives them pleasure they mock and they ridicule those who are struggling and feel absolutely not an ounce of remorse for their hurtful words as well as actions you know the saying goes sticks and stones may break my bones but words will never harm me that is a lie those words cut deep and a lot of the times when they are spewing this venom it, it reveals the heart. It shows you who they are. When they are saying all those nice, kind, endearing things, please understand that the, 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 that's the lie. That's the seduction. That's the spirit of manipulation. That is the enticement. Mm -mm. 
She means none of it. But when those fiery darts come, the word curses. The, what, 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 what's, what the enemy wants to do with that is to get you into a place of agreement so that you can be tormented by those fiery darts. It's important that, you know, if you've heard anything or, you know, if you've heard the words of not just the female narcissist, but just narcissists and toxic people in general, please do not internalize them. And I know that's so hard because it comes from a person that, you know, you looked up to, you loved, you, you thought was something, you know, they had future faked or they were supposed to represent something. Think of a mother and the representation of a mother, but all you got was word curses from her. So I understand that it's difficult, but you have to remember that it is the spirit that is speaking through them. Yes, the words are coming out of them. We wrestle not against flesh and blood. And so you must get the healing on a and the deliverance on a spiritual level. And I'm not talking about spiritual through through new age and chanting and all of this other stuff. Mm -mm. The spirit of the living God. He's the healer. Jehovah Rapha, the one who heals. That's who you need it from. In order for a female narcissist to achieve and maintain the status that she seeks, she does not care who she needs to trample over. Whoever gets in her way can get it. And whatever tools and what other, whatever other people that are at her disposal to help her get that, she will use them. She does not care. Any perceived threat must be destroyed. And sometimes the threat is her own children. Okay. So this is why they are so demonic. How do you see your own child, your own flesh and blood, the one you carried for nine months as a threat? A threat to what? Swampville? Mm-mm. They use their flying monkeys to abuse targets by proxy and they coordinate vicious relentless smear campaigns the goal at the end of the day is to steal kill and destroy utter demolition annihilation of their targets so they can have demonic dominion i want to thank you so much for sharing your time with me if you did not hit the like button i encourage you to please do so now continue to come from behind fearless one and pursue your most significant state god bless you